All right. Got my microphone. Tap, tap. Breaker, breaker. I'm ready to go. Um, yeah. So the world's not on fire, but the world's on fire. Ukraine is under invasion by Russia. That was the plan all along. Mr. Putin's plan all along. His plan took a turn when his uh, buddy, Mr. Trump, did not win re-election as planned. They tried to steal it, but it didn't work because lots of reasons, including the fact that just 7 million more people voted for Joe Biden and there wasn't enough cheating in the whole Russian cheating playbook to overcome Biden's actual victory. So... Uh, they can stuff that all day long, and that's how it is. It's also because in a prophesized time, the wheel of fortune, the wheel of fate is real. Astrology is real. The planets move around us. There are cycles and times for things. There are cycles and times where certain events are more likely to occur and less likely to occur given the energy movement that is part of astrology and the universe's need for balance. We can debate whether balance is the best way to run a universe, but we can't change it. Um, that balance is how this universe works. And the tyranny of Trump and Putin, they had their day, they made their best effort to subvert the free will of the entire globe along with other partners in other corrupt countries, and they failed. And not only did they fail, but their time passed as they failed. And so now there is nothing ahead for them but defeat, and that's how it will be. You've got ancient civilizations, all kinds of ancient civilizations, all kinds of ancient religious and spiritual belief systems You've got prophets like Nostradamus, uh, you've got seers like Edgar Casey, who all point to the same point in time, which is now, when a big cycle comes to a close and the next big cycle begins, the next great era of human expansion and evolution. And there is nothing that the darkness can do to prevent it. The only thing they can do, and they've done it more successfully than we would like, is delay it. Delay it a little bit, but then eventually, that's it. Wheel of Fortune turns, and what will be, what was meant to come to pass, what spirit intends, along with the free will of every human being on this planet, which is God-given, a gift from the Creator, then that time comes, and then all of the dark forces in the world, hey buddy, Gabe's here, they haven't got a shot, not a shot in hell, or a shot in heaven, come here buddy, oh, come here, come on, come on, I'm talking to the nice people, come here, I'll pet you, so, I don't know if Gabe will come up or not, but we can try. So, that is what's going on. Here's the sad truth. Ukraine, the people of Ukraine and the people of, of Russia and the surrounding countries, there is going to be suffering. And I don't say that with any kind of joy. I say it as a statement of fact. Come here, buddy. Until humankind is ready to give up war as a means for resolving conflicts, over resources and money and power. And until people with too much money and power get used to the idea that everyone deserves a piece of the pie, we will continue to have these stupid, unnecessary wars. But their time is ending too. And whether they know it or not, they probably don't know it because the further you get from spirit, from following what spirit requires, what spirit desires of you as a decent 
human being, as a soul, as a piece of the creator, the further you get from the, that, the less you can feel the way things really are. And so the people in the spiritual community who can feel the way things really are, we know that we are going to win. We are going to win in the prophesized time that I mentioned, and we are going to elevate the world. We've already begun to elevate the world into so-called 5D, 4D being the three dimensions plus the fourth dimension of space-time. We're on our way to 5D, and when the world has completely transitioned to 5D, the people who didn't know how to make 4D work didn't enjoy 4D, couldn't get along in 4D, they're not going to 5D. It just, they're not allowed. They'll have to incarnate somewhere else because this will be a better place for people who have decided they're ready to be more, to love more, to care more, to be more empathetic, to give more, to exist more openly, to be more charitable in their heart, in their deeds, in their words, in their support of each other. These are the things that are going to happen. They're already happening. So unfortunately, this Ukraine situation, however long it takes, is all part of the plan, so to speak. And spirit and God play hardball. Because this is not an easy world. COVID was and is hardball. COVID killed and hurt a lot of people. And the people it most killed and hurt were the people who denied its reality. If you deny reality indefinitely... Sorry. That's the battery warning. If you deny reality indefinitely... It won't work out well for you. There is an objective reality outside of each of us. We might contribute to the reality together as co-creators, but if we don't observe the way things are, if we don't use our heads, use the brains that God gave us to navigate the dangerous world as we best could and should, then we will suffer consequences. And COVID was the only way, believe it or not, you probably already believe it, to defeat Trump and defeat Putin and defeat autocracy globally. Where we're heading is a free world. I don't know if we're going to see it in my lifetime or your lifetime, depending on how old you are. That is where the world is heading and into 5D. When... Putin invaded Ukraine, he set in motion his own end. Because if Trump had been in the White House still as, as his puppet, he would have looked the other way and Ukraine would be lost. And I don't know what else would be lost. Maybe all of mankind would eventually be lost. But it didn't happen. It wasn't meant to happen. It didn't happen. And now Putin is in no win. The world is united against him. The sanctions have already started to roll out. And they'll just keep rolling. And they'll just keep rolling. Until every oligarch in Russia that benefits from Putin's corrupt rule, from his own corruption. Until every crony is squeezed. Until they get rid of him. Or somebody else gets rid of them. Or the whole thing collapses. Because... All we see globally now in this prophesized period, the end of a major cycle, the prophesized end time of even the Bible, but without the destruction of the earth, but the rebirth of the earth. With all of this chaos, we are seeing all of the old systems collapse because they don't work anymore. And among the old systems that collapse include a lot of American systems that don't work anymore. Capitalism, capitalism doesn't really work anymore. It needs a revision. It needs a lot of help. We're working on it. Autocracy never worked because autocracies, autoc autocracies, dictatorships only ever strangle their own innovation. They cannot prosper economically because they always 
turn on their own innovators because their own innovators don't play by the rules or they don't play by the the standard rules. They're inventors. They're creative. They're creative because God is creative. And you can't defeat creativity. You can only suppress creativity. You can't defeat creativity because the universe is a creative, is the most amazing creation of artistic, uh, oh, I biffed it. The universe is the most creative enterprise I've ever undertaken by the creator. It is, it is one of the most beautiful things that exists. There might be other universes. There might be other realms, but this has got to rank pretty high. There's a lot of beauty here and a lot of danger too. Nature is both beautiful, beautiful and brutal simultaneously. We live in light and darkness in this realm. In heaven, maybe it's all light. But this place is light and dark. And so that's what we have to wrestle with as part of our existence here. And we are headed for more global freedom. We are headed for more equity. The old systems in the United States and the world that don't work anymore are crashing down around us. We are in a period of high disruption. It is causing a lot of people a lot of stress, a lot of worry, a lot of economic hardship. I understand all these things. And um, that doesn't make it any easier, but w but there's no easy way through now. We The hardest part is already over. We lived through the Trump presidency, which represented the potential death of the democracy. That's over. He's not coming back. It is not happening. And everyone who is tied to him and is also tied to Russia, they're further tarnished every day the longer they stick with their lies because Russia is the aggressor in Ukraine. The country, people who are on the fence about all of this stuff, they're going to see that President Biden is the exact right person for this moment in time. He called Putin's bluff. Even to my surprise, he called Putin's bluff. He sent ships to that area when Putin got serious with the troops at the Ukrainian border. Putin expected him to stand down. Putin expected him to be soft. Putin expected that he wasn't going to want to get involved because he had withdrawn us from Afghanistan and Americans are understandably reluctant to engage in another war. Well, there won't be another war, not with American forces. The Ukrainians and others are going to have to fight for themselves, just as the founders of the United States had to fight for themselves to establish this democracy. And just as anyone who wishes to be free may have to someday fight for themselves. It's a sad truth. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But we have repeatedly been shown that in this universe, the rules of this universe are that sacrifice is required for freedom. There's just no way around it. And so the Ukrainians who die, they will be martyrs. There will be many Russian soldiers who die and their families will mourn them. And when enough families have mourned them, then the protests will grow louder and Putin will be ended. And the question is just not if, but when. And when Putin is over, then Russia has an opportunity to become a true democracy, to rejoin the world order, to be a friend to Europe, to conduct commerce in a way that is ethical and moral and fair. Right now, they supply a lot of gas, a lot of energy to Europe, and when things don't go well for Russia, they turn off the pipelines. They mess with the pipelines. They've been doing this to Ukraine for years. They mess with their power grids. They use hackers to infiltrate their critical systems in a way that hurts their populace. Well, you can only do that so long, and then you have to pay. You have to pay for it in karmic terms. And Russia is going to pay, and they're going to pay badly. And the Russian people are going to pay badly. And it's how it has to be. Just as we in America had to suffer and pay badly for the election of Trump. Even those of us who didn't vote for him. <laughs> which is most of us watching. Because as a collective, we are responsible together. 
Putin has managed to unify the West against him and the new Eastern autoc autocratic push, which includes China. China's no friend of Putin. They, they think he's a joke. He upstaged their Olympics. He invaded Ukraine, I believe, the day after the Olympics ended. On the day of the portal, the 022222 portal, which represents another transition into the new world, the new better world. And the old guard are so desperate that they're fighting it with all their breath. And I think, I wonder even sometimes to what extent they know that their time is coming to a close. I think Putin knows deep down. And much like Trump, he's a failure. His entire life is a failure because he is operating from a dictatorial mindset. That is exactly counter to the wishes of the creator. The creator wants all of his creations to be free, to exercise their free will of thought and action and self-expression. And countries and individuals that go against that, they risk damnation, if you ask me. What damnation looks like, if it's a real place, I can't say. It's not even my call. But maybe their damnation comes towards their honor their life on earth. I don't think that Mr. Trump is going to have a very good couple of years to come. And um, it's part of balancing, balancing the universe, balancing the world, balancing justice. So justice will be done. And uh, Putin, as I said, has essentially helped the Western nations to decide that whatever feelings of uh, concern they may have regarding NATO, well, those concerns pale in comparison to the threat from Putin and also from China. And there's others, you know, Turkey's got problems, uh, Brazil under Bolsonaro, and these guys are all going to go extinct in time. The question is, how long for each of them? China will one day be a free country. I don't know how long it's going to take, though. It could be 10 years. It could be 20 years. It could be 50 years. It could be 100 years. And actually, the irony is that China has a large economy, but it's only because of the number of people in the country, not because they're prosperous. They have three times as many, four times as many people as the United States, I believe, and their economy is barely larger than ours, which means we essentially have a four times higher standard of living than the average Chinese. Well, that's not prosperity. That's um, just the large country with a large overall economy. And what is interesting is when eventually China becomes a democratic country, whether that's in 100 years on Earth or less or more, China will lead the world because... China will be the largest democratic country in the world. Well, or possibly India, but more likely China. hundred years from now, the world will be very different. But until that time, the Chinese too will suffer as a whole. Because, uh, as I said, dictatorships cannot prosper. So, China will watch carefully as everything goes wrong for Putin. And when he's gone, assuming Russia becomes a democratic country, there will be one more democratic ally of the West, of Europe, of the United States, the people of the European Baltic countries that surround uh, Russia, you know, like Belarus and Estonia, Poland. Those countries will also be revitalized by the preservation of a democratic order in Europe and a new democratic order in Russia and China will be the outcast the lone autocratic superpower but weakened by the loss of its major ally Russia and when that happens it will be easier for the world to prosper and get around Chinese Chinese um, aggression 
the people of Hong Kong who were taken over by the Chinese, all 8 million of them, they lost their democracy and there was nothing we could do about it. It was tragic. Someday those people will be free again, but I don't know how long that will take. Taiwan, God willing, will remain free for as long as um, it can. And hopefully when Putin eventually fails in Ukraine, whether it takes two months or two years, the Chinese will be more hesitant to incur the wrath of the rest of the world with sanctions and other restrictions the way that the sanctions and restrictions are coming for Russia. And this is just the beginning. It's all going to get rolled out one piece at a time until Russia is squeezed like a melon. That's how it is. So, um, it's getting dark. My phone's about to die. This is your update on the world. Um, try not to worry too much about Ukraine. You can certainly donate to any na a number of charities that support Ukraine. Um, I, I believe Nova Ukraine is a really good one that Linda G recommended. You can look on her channel, on Linda D G's channel. I think it is called NovaUkraine.org. She's got a link on her community page, and I donat donated to that organization today. You can too. Um, we'll, we'll pray for the Ukrainians and for the Russians alike to um, experience the minimum amount of suffering. We'll, we won't pray for them to experience any suffering. We'll pray that the light is with them, that God is with them, and that the bulk of suffering be averted, and that those the people there be protected from harm as much as is possible. But not everyone will be spared, unfortunately. And um, keep Ukraine in your prayers, keep global climate change in your prayers, keep overcoming COVID and climate change in your prayers, keep um, praying for peace as often as you like. It all helps because all thoughts are energy in the quantum universe in which we live. Okay, that's what I got. Be well, be joyful, appreciate what you have, appreciate where you are. Um, at this point in time, especially if you live far from where the suffering is currently occurring, uh, we're, we're fortunate here in the West. We have more prosperity than we could ever really dream of. And I hope that, um, I hope that people, um, really take that to heart, um, as I do. All right. Be well. Talk to you soon.